Greetings, everyone. I'd like to share with you some interesting and unique geology along the northern White Bluffs within the Hanford Reach National Monument in Washington State. Here is exposed a diverse assemblage of geologic features, starting with the bedrock of the Miocene Columbia River basalt, visible here in the distance along the Saddle Mountains. This is an uplifted anaclinal ridge of about 10 to 17 million year old basalt lava flows. This is part of what geologists call the Yakima Fold Belt, a series of east-west trending ridges and valleys across eastern Washington, created by powerful, compressive, tectonic forces within the Earth's crust. Over many millions of years, as the ridges rose higher, the valleys have deepened, leading to the slow accumulation of river and lake deposits here in the Pasco Basin. Geologists refer to these deposits as the Ringgold Formation, which cover the basalt with up to 800 feet of sediments within the lower parts of the basin. The White Bluffs are an erosional escarpment, hundreds of feet high, originally exposed by erosion and downcutting by the Columbia River, starting about 3 million years ago, at the end of Ringgold time. The bluffs were also eroded by more recent Ice Age floods, which locally deposited slackwater rhythmites of sand and silt atop the Ringgold Formation in this area. Each rhythmite layer represents a separate, individual, outburst flood from glacial Lake Missoula. Another significant feature along the White Bluffs is the massive Lock Island landslide, one of the largest and most significant landslides in the region. The White Bluffs are especially vulnerable to landslides due to proximity of farming and associated irrigation water. Based on analyses of historical air photos, there were no major landslides along the White Bluffs before the 1960s, when farming and irrigation started to encroach upon the bluffs. Now a significant portion of the White Bluffs is sadly wasting away. However, unlike most landslides along the bluffs, the Lock Island slide was not caused by farming or over-irrigation. Instead, this slide is the result of poor judgment and lack of understanding of the hydrogeologic conditions at this site. This was in spite of state land managers whose goal was to enhance wildlife habitat. Starting in the 1970s, irrigation water was diverted southward from a nearby Columbia Basin Project Canal into an unlined ditch and retention pond. From here, the water very rapidly seeped underground, traveling toward the river along an ancient buried paleo channel eroded into the Ringgold Formation. Upon reaching the bluff face, the water sapped out in springs across a 1.5 mile wide zone along the bluffs, before eventually draining into the Columbia River. The weakened Ringgold sediments slumped and slid towards the river. The forward advance of the growing landslide has displaced the river toward Lock Island, creating several environmental problems, including the choking out of some of the most important salmon spawning habitat and destruction of tribal lands. Here, perched groundwater seeping from the bluff face is visible and where it flows along the contact between the compacted, low permeability Ringgold Formation and the overlying porous, highly permeable flood deposits. This groundwater decreases the soil strength and leads to slope instability. Excess groundwater pools up 
into sag ponds between back rotated slump blocks visible here. Since the initiation of the Lock Island landslide, strong southwest winds have blown the loosened sediment up onto the top of the bluffs. Accumulation of the wind-blown sandy sediment has created a string of active sand dunes up to 150 feet deep along the bluff's edge. To discover these features for yourself, more detailed descriptions and directions are provided in my first guidebook to the Ice Age Floods.